three years, which makes me wonder, how many debate topics are out there? I get that, I do. Um, her speech is about the urgent need for reform in the Canadian society. That is a lot of big words. Everybody give it up for you, Nina. Hi everyone, I'm Yonina. You might have known me before. And just, because, just before I get into the technical aspects of the healthcare system, as you know that I'm talking about today, I want to ask you all a question. Have you ever waited for countless hours in the emergency room just to get a small illness checked? Please raise your hand just to scream if you have. No screams, but yeah, I see a bunch of hands. And trust me, you're not alone because I have definitely experienced that too. The first time it really hit me, it wasn't even for my own illness, it was for my sister. She had a fever. Her body temperature was reaching around 40 degrees Celsius, which is quite concerning. So we went to the hospital. But can you re imagine just how long they made us wait? Six whole hours. Occasionally a nurse would just come by and check in on us, but that was it. After that six hours of waiting, my sister's no longer even sick, so we just went home. No doctors needed in the end. This case might seem relatively minor, but what really hit me was the second time I experienced this. It was for my mom. She had a brain tumor. It wasn't considered an emergency because it wasn't really spreading to other parts of her body. But we know that we need the surgery as soon as possible because we know that it might pressure her optic nerves, causing terminal eye issues. So we try to get that surgery as soon as possible. But just, in, just guess how long they made us wait. Not 26 hours, not 26 days, but a shocking 26 weeks, which matches the exact wait time average in Canada for those non-emergent surgeries. This is what spurred me to speak up here today. Why in such a country with so many technological advancements, with so many young, great, innovative minds, we're experiencing such a pressing issue in one of the most vital systems for human existence, the healthcare system. So hi everyone, I'm here today to tell you exactly what's going on with the structure of our system and my innovative solution to this problem. Before we start, I want us to look at the structure of stuff, right? Because it's widely understood that if there's a problem in such a system, there should be something wrong with the structure because that's just how systems work. And indeed, one of the main problems that cause this inefficiency is rooted in the system. So you might know that there's two different times, types of care. There's acute care and chronic care. Acute care basically emphasizes illnesses that are relatively short term and need immediate attention. For example, infections, fevers, some emergent surgeries are these kind of illnesses. So this model basically suggests that we emphasize on treating those small illnesses that are quite urgent efficiently and immediately so that the life-threatening conditions don't happen. This structure was indeed quite effective when the population was relatively younger because most of the problems that we see day to day are those smaller problems. But as our population grow, our healthcare structure is struggling to keep up because we see a shift from the acute care model to more chronic illnesses. So despite this shifting uh, in the healthcare paradigm, our, stru our structure is struggling to keep up because these chronic illnesses like heart diseases, cancer, they require this preventive, long-term coordinated treatment that acute care system can't provide. So the acute care system basically emphasizes that we need to treat them fast, treat them quick, and get it done and over is. But with those chronic illnesses, you need this long-term treatment because, for example, uh, for instance, you had a heart surgery, right? After that, you need those healing, you need the time to check in to make sure that every single part of your body is doing well after the surgery. This is what the acute care model can't provide you. And this uh, insufficiency in the shift is actually really evident in the status quo for a few reasons. The most biggest reason that we're going to talk about today is on the funding. Because we see there's so much money poured into stuff like making the emergency rooms better and equipping people with the skills to quickly treat those acute illnesses. But for instance, 
community healthcare centers that chronic illnesses needed is lacking behind. We don't really see a lot of co community illness treatments, community healthcare centers around here, right? And this basically just further entrenches the acute care par paradigm. So after we understand what's going on in the healthcare system, it's really, really clear that we need innovative solutions, right? Introducing to you Health of Us, which is a project I've been working on for a really long time. So what is our initiative? We are trying to connect people with licensed doctors through online platforms, like a website, to, to make sure that we can alleviate the pressure and burden that acute illnesses is putting on the healthcare stretcher in the status quo. One of the main goals of our project is to relieve the burden that right now the acute care illnesses are putting on the healthcare structure so that our system can sufficiently make the change from the acute care model to the chronic care model. Just imagine this. It's like your personal family doctor that you can access at your fingertip. So easy, you just open up the website, type in your question, and they will answer you in probably a day. Isn't that amazing? Right? So our ambition doesn't just stop here. Since all the technologies are flourishing, we see those WLLMs and we see those great technologies flourishing in, we are trying to make the shift towards a better future. So what we are trying to work on is that we are trying to apply AI technology into our project. They're basically similar to the chat GPTs you're familiar with, but they're meticulously trained to know what you want. They're gonna try to, they're gonna know that, hey, you're having a headache and a coughing and sleepy something at the same time. What kind of illness is that? They're gonna know that because we're giving them the database to do so. It's basically like a personal AI assistant. It's not just future. It's not what we were dreaming about since like a few years ago. It's amazing. So definitely check out my LinkedIn page. We're gonna have the official launch at the end of May. So the healthcare system, the, this one issue is just one of the many issues we're seeing in the society today. There's other really, really important issues that we need to address. For example, there's poverty, there's discrimination, there's racism, et cetera, et cetera, that we're really, really need to address in the society. So, and but I believe this is really the time for change because look around you. There's so many different technologies, there's so many open source access, and everybody's receiving high level education in such a great democratic society. So why don't you just look around you, pick up whatever you have, and try to make a change in the society. Thank you so much today for your passion, your attention, and your commitment to today's event. I believe the future is here, and it's in our hands. Let's just make it count. Thank you.